is uh, behind me is Solheim Miyokol Glacier, which is uh, one of the world's fastest disappearing glaciers. And I'm here because I want to talk to you about the quantity, intensity, and how you work with that, and really how angle affects the intensity of the sun. There's a little white marker behind me, and that marks where the glacier was eight years ago. So I'm here on a glacier in Iceland to talk to you about the quantity intensity and the equation that you need to be able to use which links intensity, power and area. Well okay, it's not the only reason I've come to Iceland, this is a school trip I'm on. Mainly about, mainly about geography. But as we know, geography is just physics but slow isn't it? Physics in Iceland. This is an actually an example of Newton's law of gravitation that things must come back down to a series of results of the accumulation of snow over a 500 years and it maybe goes 200 meters down beneath our feet, very intensity as it goes down. It's the sun's rays which will be melting this. To understand how glaciers are melting, we need to understand the way that our sun works and how the intensity of that radiation varies, not just, well, the power of the sun doesn't change, the brightness of the sun, the energy per unit time given out by the sun at point source doesn't change but the intensity of the lands here at different points on Earth, at different times of day, in different weathers, varies. You know, there's something people say when they look at a diagram that's supposed to explain why it is colder towards the north and towards the south at the poles of Earth than it is at the equator. And they look at this diagram, which is never going to be to scale if you're going to draw a diagram that includes both the sun and Earth. And they say, well, look, when you're closer to the pole, you're further away from the sun, isn't it? Yeah, okay, that's what the diagram does show, but it's a misunderstanding of the situation and understanding a diagram that's not to scale. The reason why it's so much colder at the poles is because the sun's radiation is hitting the earth at a much smaller angle. So the intensity of the sun's rays is lower. So here we are in Iceland, which is uh, one of the most northerly kind of settled places in the world. And it's kind of middle of the afternoon, the sun's just about gonna go down. So this little video is about the quantity intensity, which is a really important one to understand if you're talking about any type of radiation. Here we're talking about that electromagnetic radiation from the sun, but any type of radiation. This example where something varies with sign of an angle, and it's a very important thing to take into account if you want to do your physics correct. So although I'm not expecting you, if you're an A-level student, and this video is mainly going to be aimed at A-level students, to make that kind of error, I think it's still worth mentioning because the time when people do misunderstand something because of the way in which we have to draw a diagram. Two and a half hours south on a plane from Britain and we're in Sicily and well the sun is a lot higher in the sky here. The sun is a lot higher in the sky here so it's a much greater intensity. And that, of course, varies with the sign of the angle of incidence of those rays. So we're much higher up on that sine 90 curve. That's the air that we're walking on. It's obviously the sun's energy which is causing this glacier to melt. And here, although it's the middle of the day right now, the sun is not very high in the sky, the sun is at a very low angle. So the equation for intensity becomes intensity equals power over area, but we're going to multiply that by sine theta. Theta being the angle of the sun onto this point here. Intense, right? There's one of the, one of the many relationships where you say, well, it's a sine theta relationship. Anything that you know, well, if the, if the sun was at 90 degrees, if it was normal to the surface, the intensity would be at maximum. If it was zero degrees, it'd be zero. So that's that first part of the sine curve from zero to 90. And that's how intensity varies. And that's what punching in sine of an angle does to you. It gives you that ratio, one being the maximum, zero being obviously zero. The closer you are to the crater, the closer the angle of incidence of the sun's rays to Earth is to 90. So the greater the intensity of the sun's radiation is. 
since October now on the Spassia, so this melt water obviously varies throughout the year. October is not when the sun's at highest in the sky, so it's not the most intense and not the lowest in the sky, it's not the least intense. I have been in fact to this place here in winter, and well, it's not well, it's not visibly melting, it's melting underneath the surface, and it is still obviously falling down towards the center of the earth. But it's all covered in snow, so it looks very different today. So intensity is one of those properties that varies with sign of the angle of incidence on whatever surface you're talking about. So if we're talking about the sun's power on this area, well it's not at 90 degrees to it, so it's not going to be at a maximum. And the sun right now is actually pretty low down, you can see it's behind a cloud as well, and it's behind that mountain already, and it's like uh, 3 o'clock maybe now, is it? And <laughs> so that's a pretty low intensity on this surface here. I'm not going to get into the environmental things in this video, but uh, I think it's important to say that it's absolutely beautiful to walk on this place here. And that they are receding, most places are receding here on Earth. And it's a sign, if not proof, we don't have proof in science, but it's evidence of the fact that global warming is a, is a reality. And that if we don't slow it down, which is a huge proposition, we're going to lose out on some of our most beautiful natural features here on Earth.